Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. We have very serious breaking news. And uh, I want to go right to that. Give me one second here. We are bringing this uh, up to on, on live stream here now. Uh, again, we have had uh, damaged equipment courtesy of, uh, well, we won't even say, uh, U.S. Uh, customs, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, but let me get you uh, started here. The Temple Institute, in a video published on the 26th of July, it's already had 60,000 views, uh, has sta is stating that the Third Temple... Uh, the, the third temple, the plans for the third temple are actually uh, beginning. And those of you who are watching a live stream, you're able to see what uh, I'm showing here. The architectural plans for the third holy temple have begun. Stage one, the sanctuary. This is very serious, very breaking news. We see the uh, plans. Those of you watching also here on YouTube are able to see this. We have captured this so that you can see it. They show you the actual architectural plans as well as a 3D virtual walkthrough of the temple itself and the way it is. Now, some of you may not uh, realize just how significant this is. This is, a, this is prophetic. This is prophecy in the making. Um, we're not talking about Ezekiel's temple either, by the way. This is, the Temple Institute has told us before, we asked them directly about that. Will they actually be building, when it comes to the time to build the temple on the Temple Mount, will they be building Ezekiel's temple? And the, the, the man there that was uh, over the answering of the question said to us, no, it will not be Ezekiel's temple, not the temple that you see in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, so, as you guys are seeing here, they are showing you the 3D walkthrough right now. Uh, and yet, if it's not Ezekiel's temple, then what is the third temple about? Now, personally, if we are building a third temple for the sake of prayer, for the Jewish people, for consecration of their lives to the Lord, then I believe God would be okay with this. This would be acceptable in the sight of Almighty God. Because why? You know, the, the children of Israel are looking to reestablish their house of worship that was there on the Temple Mount, on the Holy of Holies. And that's an honorable thing, no doubt about that. But the problem comes in when they're wanting to take and offer animal sacrifices once again. But before we go to the animal sacrifices, let me take uh, you first to the book of Revelation. Uh, and, and those of you that are, that are watching here, uh, I will pause this just for a moment. Uh, so that you can see more. Again, you're seeing more of the archeo archeo archeological, uh, architectural drawings that have already been done for the Third Temple. Uh, let me just pause that, though. I want to take you to a, a, another portion here right now. And uh, uh, let me just, I gotta get this down here off the screen just for a moment and share with you the biblical prophecy that is being fulfilled as we speak. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Let's read it together. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. But notice the wording here, the measure. Measure the temple of God. Let me, let me share that with those of you there on, on, on live stream here. Let me let you see exactly here what we're looking at on the scriptural passage here. Follow me up here, verse 1 again. And there was given me a reed like and to a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. See, a measuring stick, a measuring rod. What does an architect use when he's doing his drawings? He's using a measuring stick. Now, obviously, 
The prophet here is referring to the fact the temple has already been constructed and they're measuring the temple afterwards. But that's kind of unique in itself. It seems to me, now that I see this uh, the video by the Temple Institute, that no doubt that what God is doing here was showing us that the day that they would begin to do the drawings, the measuring stick, the measuring rod, is measuring the temple and the altar and them that worship therein to see what the capacity is that it would be able to hold. Why? Because they're internationalizing Jerusalem. Remember, as I told you guys before, you know, Jerusalem is being internationalized. It is becoming the international city. This is exactly what uh, uh, the, the Rome is wanting to do. So if you don't think that Rome is not going to have some part, whether it be secretively or not, in the building of this third temple, then you are sadly mistaken because Rome is controlling this entire earth. And by the way, we are. There's been a lot of skeptics about some of the things that we've been speaking about. And I'm just sharing here uh, this here with our friends here on live stream again with you on YouTube. Here is the checkpoint that has been constructed is being constructed now on Highway 1 going into Jerusalem. This is definitely going to be uh, uh, this is being done in order to facilitate this international city that Jerusalem is going to become. Jerusalem will become an international city. And now the thing is, I believe the Israeli government at the appropriate time for them will announce this and they will probably announce it as something that will, will be for the safety of those that are coming into Jerusalem. But clearly Micah chapter 4 says that the Jews will be evicted, even as Guglielmo Miotti reported in Israel National News, uh, they will be evicted from parts of Jerusalem and dwell in the fields. So we see the checkpoint going in. It is being made an international city. No doubt the Vatican's hands are behind it. Now, I am concerned because I do know that uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, he seems to be a very good man, very man that seems to love God, but I've been very concerned in his, in his uh, leaning towards the Arab nations because I know that the Temple Institute believes that they have to have permission of the Muslims in order to build the third temple. And I believe this is one of the reasons why Yehuda Glick has been using his political status to be able to warm up to the Muslim people. Well, see, God is not interested in what the Muslim people think about this. The Muslim people, though, I do believe they need Yeshua is what they need. That's what they really need. And my heart goes out for them because the Vatican is using them like a pawn, according to Daniel chapter 11, where they come up strong with the small people. But all along, this is, <coughs> excuse me, nothing but a ploy of Rome. It is clearly nothing but a ploy of Rome. And my heart is saddened to say the least. Now, let's take, let's go back to the scripture here. And because the part of the title of this video here is saying to you that, I say to you that the two witnesses are about to come on the scene. This is a fact because Revelation 11 says they're taking a reed like into a rod, a measuring stick. They're measuring. They're doing the plans of the third temple as we speak. Revelation 11, 1 is being fulfilled right in your eyes. See, so it says, but the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now, what is it? The Temple Institute may be working with the Vatican to do a deal to allow the building of the third temple. In exchange, the Palestinians are going to get to dwell in the outer court or the where the old city of David is, East Jerusalem, as we call this area here, the Eastern Gate and that side there. They're no doubt going to be given self-autonomy. We know this because why? They've already introduced Palestinian police in Jerusalem-controlled areas that are controlled by the Israeli people. So it is certainly building at a momentous rate right now. Now, you're not going to see a covenant for seven years or three and a half years when this happens. It's just going to happen. The prophet is showing you three and a half years because he knows that's how much time is left to deal for the two witnesses to bring their message out. Now, in the very near future, I'm going to bring something out to you because I was about to make a video once again on Daniel's 70 weeks 
streets and the Lord stopped me in the middle of the video and said don't do it and at that very moment I go to the closet in prayer and seek before the Lord because I was making the video for a Jewish rabbi that listens to our channel to try to help him to understand and the Lord stopped me and corrected me and said you're not saying it right this is what it is and then fell in my hand the Bible and opened to the very page of a warning to me to let me know what it is. So you're seeing right here, there's three and a half years right here that the two witnesses are going to speak about. And there's so many things that I got to share with you about this that is beyond uh, normal understanding even. It's just a blessing, no less. Now, let me take you real quick now. We're looking here at the scripture again. And I will give power. Because see, notice, they give the, 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 verse 2 says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The holy city. What's the holy city? Jerusalem is the holy city. They're going to make it an international city and the Palestinians are going to be allowed to return. Wake up, my Jewish brethren. What is wrong with you? You have allowed the devil to come in. You've allowed the Pope of Rome to sit there and do a communion service, not only in the upper room. You allowed him to bring special forces of Israel to come in there and throw the Jews out of the tomb of David and do a communion service in the tomb. What is wrong with you? Rabbi Richmond, what is wrong with you in the Temple Institute? Scriptures are being fulfilled in Jerusalem on a daily basis nearly, and you don't even recognize it. You're all about building of the third temple, and God bless you for the building of the third temple. Use it as a house of prayer, not as a house of sacrifice. Isaiah the prophet has warned you of such. Let's go to that as well. Let me take you. Let's go quickly. And we go here. Let me take you to where we can find this here. Um, we're going to go to the Mamre Bible online here. I'll bring you guys to this here. Let me get you over here to this here. This is where you can see the Hebrew and the English of it. I want to go to Yeshayahu, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Navi, Yeshayahu. And let's see what the prophet had to say and whether or not we are toning up to God's word. Because he said in the 66th chapter, he prophesied of this. You see, the thing is, God, God is not... He's not displeased, my brethren. He's not displeased, my rabbinical brethren, with the building of the third temple. It would be no different than any other synagogue that you would build in his heart and in his sight. And he knows the longing that you have to be where the Holy of Holies once stood. Well, the Holy of Holies walked in your midst 2,000 years ago. And Daniel said that he would be cut off at the end of the 69th week before the destruction of the second temple, as even many rabbinical scholars recognized. In Isaiah 66 and verse 1, Aleph, Ko Adonai, Hashemayim Kisa'i, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, then the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you may build unto me? And where is the place that, that may be my resting place? See? Manachuti. Where is the place? Okay? He sees our heart. He knows that there's, we have a desire to want at their temple, but he's asking us, where is the place of my resting place? What house will you build me? See, David wanted to build a house. God loved him, but he said, you're a man with, with blood on your hands. You cannot build it, David, but I'll allow your son to build it, Solomon. Then that temple was destroyed on Tishbeav. They, amount, they make the announcements on Tish Be'av that they're going to build a third temple, that the plans have already started. You're fulfilling Revelation 11. Don't know it, my brethren. You've ignored that the Mashiach, who has been in your midst 2,000 years ago, you're ignoring Zechariah's prophecy of chapter 12, where we will look upon him whom we thrust through. There was the Romans that thrust through. I'm not talking about the piercing of the hands. I know that many rabbis, like Rabbi Singer, has said that is thrust through in Hebrew. It has nothing to do with the piercing of the hands. But David said in the Psalms, they pierced my hands and my feet. But yes, he was thrust through. Why? Just like Adam was, Satan tried to kill him. 
In the ancient documents about him, he took a stone and drove it to his side, and blood and water came forth from him. So did blood and water come from, from Yeshua. Why? Because the rock that was in the wilderness, we are a priestly nation. You want to know what God called us for? You're trying to reset up the priestly nation again. You're trying to reset up sacrificial services. The sacrifice was offered 2,000 years ago. Not being offered today. He did that sacrifice 2,000 years ago. And my friend, oh my gosh. I got a message just the other day that a dear friend of mine, Mark Viltz, that they're actually praying in, in, in agreement for the starting of the sacrifices. Now, if I'm wrong, my brother, God forgive me, I, I, love, him, I love Brother Mark dearly. And I'm going to email him and ask him about this. Because maybe Brother Mark is not aware of Isaiah 66 and the application of Isaiah 66 is applying to what is being done now. So the, the, the point is that you have to understand is that God is not looking, he's, it's okay, he's not against it, but as he says, where is the house that you're going to build me? He says in verse 2, for all these things hath my hand made, and so all these things came to be, to, came to be, saith the Lord. But on this man will I look. See, he's showing you what he's expecting of you. On this man will I look, even on him that is poor and a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. He is talking about Zechariah 12. My Jewish brother, let me tell you something. I said to you a few seconds ago, we were born to be a priestly nation. That's exactly right. We were called as the Jewish people to offer the sacrifices unto God. But God was looking for the pure oblation. The pure oblation was Yeshua. He became that lamb that was offered up. As he said, woe to the man that does. Moses proved it when he took, and God says when, when the children of Israel were complaining, they said, is God among us or not? And God said to Moses, take the elders of Israel and go out to the rock. This is not, not 38 years later, my Christian friends, that where God said to him, speak to the rock. This was the first time when it was only about two months after the journey, after the crossing of the Red Sea. And God said to him, take the elders of Israel, go out and speak to the rock that it bring forth its waters. No, excuse me, smite the rock that it bring forth its waters. Showing that the children of Israel, the elders of Israel, would condemn the, the rock and Christ Yeshua, Jesus, was that rock that would be condemned by Israel. But he would be smitten in order to bring forth the water. What do you think happened when he was upon the cross? Like Adam, Adam was laid into a deep sleep in order to bring forth his bride. And God had already breathed. Ipak pa'ab nishmar chayim, it says in Genesis, Barashit. He breathed into the nostrils of Adam, the mankind, Nishmar Chaim, the, the, the very life of Almighty God was breathed in a plural form. And what do you think happened when God opened up Adam's side? He takes part of that life, mean ish, from ish. What is ish? It is the fire, Aleph Sheen. Is fire, the yard in the middle, being the first letter of the divine name of God. God was in the fire. It was the spirit of Almighty God and the humankind in a plural form. Why? Because Adam and Eve were one being, my brothers. And he opened him up and he taken out Isha. And you know it's written in our Torah, in the commentaries by the sages, that her name was also El Shin, Ish, the fire, Ish, the fire, and the He at the end, the Yod and the He from the Ish and the Isha, makes what? God! God was showing you that Him inside of you, that is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that the Christian speaks about today. And the only way that that way could be, get, the only way we could get back to the tree of life that breathed that upon Adam was for the tree of life himself to come. He was also called the rock. David said it was, it was Hashem that was on that rock. That's exactly right. And when that rock was smitten 2,000 years ago, water and blood came from his side. Didn't he tell the woman at the well? If you knew it was it was talking to you, you'd ask me for a drink. But you don't come here to thirst no more. He was giving her a sign. Why did we miss that sign? My gosh. So this is what happens. 
in Isaiah 66. You're trying to build the third temple. You're making the drawings. You're bringing the two witnesses on the scene to correct what you're doing. And those of you that think that the two witnesses are coming on the scene to say, oh, this is how you should build it. Oh, they're going to help in it. Wrong! There comes a time where the... You, know, you have to think about... That, 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 that. You know, the other day the Lord revealed to my heart when I saw that you were taking and you were raising that red heifer in order to offer as a sacrifice. And then the Lord revealed to me, suddenly the Spirit of Almighty God come upon me and he reminded me the words of Yeshua that says, as a dog returns through a vomit, so do you. And the Lord showed me that that's exactly what you're doing when you're offering the sacrifices. You're doing what Yeshua said. You're returning to the same vomit. When Yeshua come on this earth, he was the one that stopped the sacrificial service. He's the one that took the cords and beat the money changers out and said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves. And he loosed the animals. And he made this declaration that, that right, some, right around that time as well, just paraphrasing, it's in the book of Matthew. I read it in the Hebrew Matthew as well. The one that the Jewish rabbis have maintained down through the centuries. He said, I des he said, if you understood what this meant, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the innocent. And many Christians, no doubt, probably believe that that was speaking of him, Yeshua himself, but it was not. In the Hebrew Matthew, it's in a masculine plural. You would have not have condemned the innocent, but in the Hebrew Matthew, it says you would not have bound the guiltless. And it's all in a plural. He was talking about the animals. That's why we see in Hosea. That's why we see David says in the Psalms in the 40th chapter, I believe it is in the 51st chapter as well, if you had desired a sacrifice, I would have offered it. Now I'm not saying there wasn't a permissive will. I'm not saying that there wasn't sacrifices being offered. Yes, there was. Yeshua wouldn't have come and stopped it if there wasn't being offered. But now here we are, the building of the third temple prophesied by John in Revelation 11. He prophesied the day you would do the blueprints. And then we find here in Isaiah 66, and let me take that for my brothers, sisters that are watching. My Jewish brothers, you can see it here plainly. The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you may build unto me? This is prophetic. This is, this is after the destruction of the second temple. I mean, it's probably speaking about the beyond that time. See, you have to understand why. The temple was there when Isaiah was prophesying of this. So he's asking, what house will you build me? Future tents. A third temple. For all these things my hand have made, and, 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 and so all these things can be, came to be, saith the Lord, but on this man will I look even unto him that is poor and a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. My gosh. Friends, he that killeth an ox, verse 3, as if he slew a man. That's your red heifer. He's letting you know that if you kill the ox, after he sent Yeshua to stop this 2,000 years ago. If you kill an ox, it'll be the same as if you killed a man. That's why God put in his commandments, thou shalt not kill. And in the Hebrew language, it's the same word as butcher. He that sacrificed the lamb as if he broke a dog's neck. Because he knows you're going to do it anyway. So he's warning you. The prophet Isaiah is warning you. He that offereth a meal offering as if offered swine's blood. He that maketh a, a memorial offering of frankincense as if he blessed an idol. You know, it was only God's mercy. And Gershon Solomon, I love this brother with all of my heart. But it was God's mercy when we went with him bringing the barley harvest to the Temple Mount. He knew that we would not get in because there was no temple to make the offering, but it was God's mercy that kept me and my wife from sinning against God. Because had we offered it, it would have been as if we offered swine's blood. 
He's not looking, my brothers, for us to offer these things. He doesn't want you to burn incense in the temple like the Catholic Church does in the house of Baal in there in Jerusalem that you have permitted. What God wants is you to tear down the altars of Baal. What God wants you to do is to clean up Israel and to get rid of all these altars to Baal. He wants you to recognize that the Mashiach has already come in your midst and his name was Yeshua. Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach. And the signs are there. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, you brethren that hate, that hate you, that cast you out of my name for my name's sake, have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may gaze upon your joy, but they shall be ashamed. Let me quickly take you. I want to quickly take you. Hang on one second. Please bear with me. I want to take you, my friends, to Zechariah, my rabbinical brethren. And we're going to go back to Revelation and conclude in this broadcast. Okay? In Zechariah chapter 12. Okay? Now, let's just scroll down here. We're going to go to verse 6. Start with verse 6. In that day will I make the chiefs of Judah like a pan, a fire among the wood, and, the, and like a torch among uh, the sheaves. Wait a minute, just one minute now. Yes, here, I'm sorry. Let's go down to verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me because they have thrust him through. You rejected this because the Christian people said it was his hands and his feet, but the Roman soldiers thrust him through. As I said about, even in the book, of, the, the book of Adam and Eve, I know it's considered a fiction. It's not part of the canon. But isn't it interesting? A document that was written 200 years before Yeshua wrote that Adam, the Satan tried to kill him, thrust through his side, and he died upon the altar, and God come and raised him from the dead. Whether it's true or not, I can't say. But it sure is interesting, hasn't it? So Yeshua was thrust through as well. And the water came from his sign as a sign to the Jews that he was that rock. The Hatsua, the rock. And in that day, excuse me, you thrust him through, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his first mourn. And that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of Hadramanon in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, their wives apart, the family of the Shemites apart, their wives apart, and all the families that remain, every part and their wives apart. Just as the prophecy was written early that the house of Judah would be brought home first that it doesn't lift up against the house of Israel. Why? Because it was the house of Judah that condemned Yeshua to death. Not the house of Israel. The house of Israel wasn't there. But interestingly enough, you know as well as I do, rabbinical brethren, David, Nathan, are from the tribe of Judah. The Levites, from their own tribe, Levi. Shemai is from the tribe of Benjamin. The families that remain, the Samaritans. Scripture is repeating itself. David, look at the story of David in, in, the, in the book of Chronicles. David weeps over Jerusalem just like Yeshua wept over Jerusalem. David leaves because why? His son did not recognize that he was the anointed king. Absalom rejected David. Isn't it interesting that he named his son Absalom? My father's peace. He named him after the coming of Mashiach. Do you know why David wept and bitter, so bitterly over him? Do you know why David wept so bitterly over the death of his son Absalom? You know, his men were angry with him. Why are you doing this? You're being a disgrace. He was living out the life of Yeshua before you, my brethren. Because just as Absalom did not recognize David to be the king, neither did you recognize our forefathers 
the house of Judah in the time of Yeshua the Mashiach when he was there, we did not recognize him as Messiah. We did not recognize him as Av Shalom. My father is peace. Because it says in Isaiah 9, 6 that he would be called the Prince of Peace. Or excuse me, the Counselor. The Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. I'm paraphrasing it. It was him. And Yeshua, David was living out Yeshua's life. He wept so bitterly over his son. Because why? At the death of his son. And that's what Yeshua was weeping over as well. Because Israel had rejected him. And he knew what was going to befall them. Even Shema spits on him. Shema is here. Again, Zechariah letting you know. This is why the cup was put into Benjamin's bag back, what, 4,000 years ago? When Joseph and his brethren, he comes and he brings down his youngest brother Benjamin and he puts his own cup in his bag, it was showing that we rejected Yeshua at the communion table 2,000 years ago. And, and Joseph was showing that the Benjamites would reject Yeshua as well. Though he was never guilty of anything. Just as we were never guilty as Jews of today. But the cup is in our bag. What are we going to do with it? My brethren, I'm coming to Israel in September. If you want to meet with me, I will gladly meet with you. You can email me. The easiest way to get an email to me is through my wife. I'll put her email on the screen for you. Or you can email me directly, Stephen Benun, S-T-E-V-E-N-B-E-N-N-U-N -E -E -N -N at AOL.com. I get a lot of email. Be with me. I will meet with you, Rabbi. I trust you will prayerfully consider Yeshua. Look at the prophecies and consider it diligently. Scripture is being fulfilled daily. I told you what Pope Francis has been fulfilling daily. He is the Antichrist spirit that the Christians speak of. And many Christians do not see that. They still believe he's only the false prophet. But I have got a video coming very soon that will show greater detail than they've ever even believed possible that the Pope of Rome is controlling this world. And for my Jewish brethren, I will come and speak with you personally, one-on-one, -on -one, or together in a group. Let's talk about who the Messiah really is. For my Christian brothers and sisters that are watching this video now on live stream as well, um, I want to take you, just quickly, to the book of Revelation once again. Revelation 11, 1, as we said, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. I personally believe, though it, it appears to be a completed temple that he's measuring, I do believe it is also compound prophetic meaning that he's seeing the temple plans as the Temple Institute has just announced on Tish B'Av, July 26, 2015. Just as the Pope of Rome has fulfilled the biblical scripture in Obadiah, where it speaks that they would drink on my holy mountain and would drink continually. It was in the masculine plural. And when the Pope of Rome came with his delegation and the priests that were there in Jerusalem, it was only men that drank, showing that they were fulfilling Obadiah's prophecy. Then it says, and the nation shall continually drink. That happens to be uh, Sheteu, which is in the uh, plural uh, gender inclusive. And they've continued to drink on Mount Zion. And they will continue to do this. Because why? The outer courts is given to the Gentiles. My Jewish brethren, as Gulio Miotti wrote in Israel National News, Jews will be evicted from Jerusalem in the very near future. Now, that's verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles in the holy city, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth. Again, the prophecy in Zechariah. Two witnesses are coming. Yeshua says as well, when this gospel is preached unto all the world, then the end will come. Matthew chapter 24. This gospel is the gospel that Yeshua preached. And my Christian brothers and sisters, I cannot see a bride being without spot or wrinkle with all the different denominational doctrinal views. 
you're going to see them. The ministry of the two witnesses, because they're coming to get you ready. I've had messages recently from people saying that the Elijah has already come. The Elijah of Malachi 4 has not been fulfilled. It is not possible because the dread, great and dreadful day follows immediately after the ministry of Elijah, which is perfectly in line where also Yeshua says that he will restore all things. And when we read this in the Hebrew language, we are clear to understand the ministry, according to Revelation 11, is three and a half years. Some people thought it was three and a half years to the dot. They thought that Israel went by a lunar calendar. But according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, Israel actually went by a 364-day year calendar. So by the way, when the two witnesses, their dead bodies, lay in the street of Jerusalem, outside of the Damascus Gate, near the Palestinian bus station there, where also the Lord was crucified, when their bodies are laying there in that street there, they, there will still be, they will, they will lay there three and a half days. What are they laying there three and a half days for, my Jewish brethren? Because God requires two witnesses before he can stone a prostitute. And the Catholic Church and all the denominational churches that are following with her are prostitutes, harlots, and whore. The Catholic Church is the whore, the mother. They even admit that they are the mother church of all churches. They are. The harlots are returning to her. But in order to judge them with fire, God must have two witnesses. They preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, Moses and Elijah. The Jewish people, my Jewish brethren, you both believe that both Eliyahu, you open the door, and you believe that he's coming according to Malachi 4. That's why we leave the door open on Passover for Eliyahu, Elijah, Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, but also, there is Rashi who believes that Moshe will be here during the Messianic age. Because of why? According to uh, Revelation, excuse me, Exodus 15, it says, Moses wrote these words, I will sing unto the Lord, Asherah Ga'o uh, Ga'ah. Excuse me, Asherah Ladonai Ga'o Ga'ah. I will sing unto the Lord that he has gotten victory over what? The Sus Merakevo, over the horse and his rider. That is one horse, one rider, not 600. It is the Antichrist spirit. It is the Pope of Rome that he gets the victory over. And by the way, 360 days is what they preach there, the three and a half years. They lay three and a half days in the tomb. They're raised up, which is actually the fourth day. And there only happens to be about eight days left or something like that, according to the Essene, excuse me, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the scholars that have revealed that it was a 364-day calendar. Well, guess what? The vials that God pours out over the next week, the judgments of Almighty God, encompass those final days. My Christian friends, you're going to see the ministry of the two witnesses. They're going to get you ready for the rapture. That is the gospel going to all the world. They're going to get the Jews ready. Why do you think it says that they will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew? Ten people of the nations you're going to recognize that God is once again among Israel. That's how you will know who the two witnesses are, the revival. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live with probably the most important prophetic segment I have ever done. God bless you. Prayerfully consider it, my Christian friends.